of course, um, I'm sure most of you are aware that Joe Rogan finally got a chance to sit down and interview Kanye fucking West. Um, long time coming, um, especially for fans of the podcast, you would have known that there was a conversation around Joe Rogan interviewing Kanye. Maybe sometime last year, there was a lot of ups and downs, um, you know, in terms of that happening. You know, obviously Kanye having one of his many uh, mental breakthroughs, he calls them, not breakdowns. And of course, you know, um, there was a question whether or not he would go on the show, having recently um, converted to Christianity and all this, or recommitted his life to Christ, blah, 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 blah. blah. But eventually they kind of sorted out, especially um, off the back of um jamie catching or jamie testing positive for covid19 there was also a, a, a kind of idea that oh they're going to push it back indefinitely but they managed to make it work uh joe rogan managed to kind of rope in brian redband the original producer for the joe rogan podcast or joe rogan experience sorry and got kanye west in for a pretty in-depth three-hour conversation that i thought was pretty interesting it might have been the possibly the best kanye interview i've seen in recent years um, especially when you consider some of the more crazier interviews he's had, you know, the ones that come to mind, obviously the TMZ ones, but um, he was lucid, clear-minded. Um, he looks great. He looks really healthy. He looks like he lost a bunch of weight as well. Um, he looks like he's in a much better place mentally. I'm sure the success of Yeezy has definitely helped in that regard. He's having fun with his presidency. It seems like even though there are bits in the interview where he quite clearly is given the impression that he's taking his president, this run for presidency very, very seriously seriously but it's also mostly an exercise of him to illustrate that nothing is impossible that he can achieve and try and push most things like he's done in his career but i think overall again as a fan of kanye and what he's produced over the years it is interesting to see um to kind of wrangle with myself about the lack of interest that i have in him as a person in general i watched the interview because it's kanye west he's box office and i want to see what some of the bands would be about and maybe see some you know maybe catch some gems here and there but in terms of caring um about what he does and you know following his every move my interest has really waned over the years and i'm not sure it's because i've just grown up or because he's just demonstrated over time and time again that he can be a bit of an idiot in some places. Um, you know, I think a lot of the stuff that really turned me off, especially during the, I, I don't care who he votes for, you know, he can do what he wants, but this kind of um, uh, persistent stance that he had against intellectualism and not wanting to rest, not wanting to maybe, maybe um, not wanting to uh, try to articulate himself the best possible way or read up on the subject and just going with his first thought, was something that really kind of bothered me um the fact that he was maybe using his influence and his um notoriety in a real self-serving way maybe more so than he was in the past someone could argue that hey he's always been self-serving narcissistic but he was a bit more clever about his approach and he kind of made it seem as if we as fans were all sort of in it together with him and he was kind of doing this for us kind of thing but now it quite clearly seems especially since his marriage with kim kardashian that it's all about kanye even sometimes to the detriment of his own family right he sometimes can say some things about his kids that you kind of think whoa mate you probably don't want to talk about this in public but again as long as the tension's on him all, all is good so it's been hard to you know follow him and be a fan of what he's about but in terms of creating products and you know just being a master of marketing um you definitely need to kind of pay attention to what he does because there's no one operating on his level that does what he does so that's something you can definitely take away from it and there are some clips and bits stuff here that i've sort of um found on social that were full of main interest um there's actually a breakdown here someone uploaded on twitter of most of the topics that he spoke about um minute by minute uh, da, da, da. what is the thing that i like the most on here the music industry conversations were really interesting again there's a lot of self-servingness in there especially when you consider the the issues that are sort of in the background regarding big sean's contract and the lack of masters that he's been given back and the fact that he's owed money from kanye that he hasn't been paid blah 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 blah, blah. um he spoke a lot about money like a lot and it's making me believe that most you know <laughs> there was this understanding i guess if you're kanye and you've always been doubted from the minute you entered the music all the way until fashion and streetwear, not fashion and footwear and whatever he's doing now, he's always been met with some kind of resistance and pushback. It would make sense why he would be so adamant to mention at every moment that he's a million, that he's a billionaire, that he got out of debt, that he's rich, that he's got money, he's got access. Because I guess those things are kind of um, 
what did Elon Musk say? Elon Musk said something about um, vector. What was it? Attack vectors, right? Yeah. When Elon Musk was on Joe Rogan, he mentioned something along the lines. I think Joe Rogan asked him, oh, why doesn't he have like nice things? I don't know, like a massive house and all these other things, right? Like uh, trappings of a rich person. And he remember Elon Musk saying those were like attack vectors. Like people already, you know, find reasons to hate Elon. So he doesn't need to give them any more ammunition and give them vectors to attack him with by, you know, going out there and spending um, conspicuously on mad things. So I think maybe with Kanye, with the money, maybe for him, money is the opposite of that. And it's sort of like a defense vector because you can never question or push back on his ideas because he's demonstrated in every field that he's basically attacked, that he can master it and kind of, uh, you know, and get to the absolute apex of it and command a real high, you know, share price value and introduction, whatever it may be, because he mentions in the podcast about how the share price of Gap went up whenever he mentioned when there was announced that he's collaborating with them, blah, 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 blah. So that was something that kind of, you know, was a bit unsettling, you know, because, you know, Kanye is meant to be the creative inspiration, motivation guy, but to have him constantly mention money was a bit upsetting. But again, I get where he's coming from. Tessa Edison conversation was good. There's an issue with something about Black History Month and abortions was a bit spicy. Said something along the lines of, oh, um, black abortions are essentially genocide, which was um, the most Kanye thing I've ever heard in my life. Um, that was interesting to see. I love these comments regarding Star Wars and basically the modern interpretation of Star Wars is complete dog shit, which echoes a lot of the stuff that you hear people online, some of the fan, the fandom menace, right, speak about on social and a lot of the people involved with Disney Star Wars will go out there and say, oh, the fans are toxic and they create a bad atmosphere for the movies that they make. And now to have somebody of Kanye West level saying that essentially the modern um, incarnation, the modern you know product of Star Wars is completely devoid of some of the magic that existed in George Lucas's era was nice to hear. I'm sure some of the um, Star Wars fans out there were happy that he mentioned that. And of course, the shoe design bits and pieces. But let's um, go on some of the clips I thought were of interest. Oh, not that one this one kind of what's explains his mindset let's click that uh so with this uh and i i love giving you guys my riffs i'm like a human version of instagram when you look at instagram <laughs> you look at you know you're looking like a, a hundred images a day uh well i've got millions of images in my mind and the majority of them haven't been realized yet I say he's more so a human representation of Google Chrome. You know, you've got like a million tabs open. Well, like I have anyway. I've got probably like six tabs in my blocking tux, but that's probably what he's like. But anyway, let's continue on. Kanye West is building a 120,000 person stage in Atlanta, which I thought was a pretty cool idea that he mentioned too. Uh, in the past couple months, have been going to Atlanta for two days a week or three days a week uh, because I'm building this uh, 120,000 uh oh i'm not supposed to say that i'm building <laughs> we're building Oops. a sound stage but like it, it sounds like an amphitheater something that you would imagine would existed during the roman empire right this amazing cavernous um structure that was designed in a way that really maximized the acoustic the, the acoustics i think he mentions it so that the roaring um chorusy harmony vibe of the choir will just reverberate around the entire arena that would be pretty cool to see again will it be actualized during covid we never know but i thought that was cool another one he mentions about the 20 dollars foam runners that he's making with yeezy which i think are an incredible 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 shoe most people hate them but i'm a big fan of that shoe so so for me you know i i'm gonna make this shoe be 20 dollars and you know money isn't real so that means the world should be eventually free so i'm gonna manifest the world being free my dad uh, he lives in a dr and he says you know anything that you put in the ground grows so why do people still go hungry and i, I like that in theory but i was like man farming is really hard though man i think <laughs> you know i might go hungry if i have someone to farm this food <laughs> it's like but you know Back in the days, we, we, we had that skill set. Now we're losing these skill sets that actually we can sustain off of. Uh, so with this, uh, and I, I love giving you guys my riffs. I and I think that I think you mentioned earlier in the interview that supposed to be the fun run is completely manufactured in the States too. So that obviously there's the ability to ramp up and ramp down or ramp up and wind down production based on basically the demand. So that I thought that was pretty interesting as well. 
and then I think that might be it for the clips. What else is here? And then we have here a clip of Kanye um, explaining the missing banister theory. Every kid loves to draw. Yeah. Right? But some people got to grow up. And like right. the artists right. in some way don't have to. Yes. Like yeah. this separate, we're all children. We're all, if you're, if you're alive, you're a child. We're all children in God's eyes and we're all young people. Like Jesus is a, old person like he's oh like <laughs> you know like adam is old you know if you're alive you're you're young and we're like children mm. and there's all these things these sharp edges these corners these anxieties these fears these things put in our our food our diet our, our diet of what we consume right here that turn us old and make us brittle and make us uh, put that fear on our kids. Don't you put that evil on me, Ricky Bobby. They put that, <laughs> they put that, <laughs> we put these evils on our children. We put yeah, racism sure. on our children. We put fear yep. on our children. And the, the children are fearless. The children, I, it's it's funny. It's like Claudio Silvestri, one of our lead architects that I work with since uh, age 24, he built this home in Majorca with John, with John Paulson. And he has like this golf course which it's in the acoustics are incredible, but it's this part where you can walk along that's 20 feet high. And I said, you know, would you, you know, what about the kids? What, you know, you have a balcony, you have a banister or something. And he looked at me and said, they're smarter than we think. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and meaning like, if we were never taught the missing banister theory that we could all tightrope walk. Mm. The missing banister theory, I wrote it in my book, Thank You and You're Welcome, that I wrote with my friend Sakaya that's actually here right now That's uh, 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 that you were talking to earlier. is, Look, you could walk down a straight line without worrying about anything, uh, but you take that exact straight line and put it 20 story high, 20 stories high, mm -hmm. and you know I'm going with it, yep. and you remove the balconies, you're going to be so concerned about the idea of falling that it will make you fall. Yep. And that's where the superpower is in removing the fear. Yes. So again, as a fan of the Joe Rogan podcast and obviously being a fan of Kanye, it's great to see him on the show, right? I love it. It's amazing. But it's just funny to see Joe fawning over Kanye West, especially considering the amount of times he's bashed Kanye, not bashed, bashed mostly Kim Kardashian and um, Kanye's wife over, you know, over time. He's obviously said some maybe he's kind of painted Kanye to be crazy when he was acting crazy but it's interesting to see how different Joe is whenever the person's in front of him he always seems to um calibrate his energy based on the person that comes in front and how they basically vibe which you can under understand in it he's not going to go out and start you know calling um Kim Kardashian's bum fake in front of her fucking husband Do you know I mean I can definitely understand that but it's just funny to see that happen but again interesting enough interview I think if you haven't um, consumed any Kanye content lately is probably the best one to consume because he's talking to an actual normal human that isn't sucking him up as much as others would have if they sat down with him but if you're looking for somebody to push him back on some of his topics the only way I saw Joe really challenging Kanye was on some of the you know, some some of his policies for this is you know, for the supposed presidential run that he's kind of running on and he kind of came up a bit short that was the only part of the interview where Kanye kind of had to pause a few moments and gather his thoughts and really think about what he was saying. Most of the times he was freewheeling on the topics that he knows and he could speak about quite eloquently. But when it came to politics, he had a lot of kind of, you know, a lot of um, excuses as to why he couldn't um, speak on certain things. So I guess he might not be the right person to vote for in the ballots. But again, you know, why not throw his name on there if you're that way inclined? You know, it's not really my place to say, really. I'm not over there. But again, pretty decent interview, I think, for the most part 